Hello everyone, it's me Bryson P, and today, for the first time, we will be reacting to the channel Not Just Bikes, and we're going to be finding out why the Dutch bikes are better. Are they better? I'm not sure, but we're going to be finding out here in just a moment. Let's get started. This is our Dutch bicycle. It's an Oma Fiets, literally grandma bicycle. There is really nothing special about it, at least here in the Netherlands. But in Canada, the US, or many other countries, this bike would be very unique indeed, and bicycles like this one really surprised me the first time I visited the Netherlands. There's a good reason for this uniqueness. In the Netherlands, bicycles are seen as a tool for everyday transportation, a way to get from point A to point B quickly and efficiently. In most other countries, bicycles are used primarily for sport and exercise. This one difference explains nearly everything special about a bike like this. Exactly right there in the opening statement. I have never had a bicycle like that or of that style. I have had mountain bikes for, of course, going on trails and different things, not for street use like that. And then I've also had BMX bikes, and that's what I used to ride. But I would ride my bicycle every single day. I would get home from school and I would be on my bicycle. Gone. My parents wouldn't know where I was. I'd just be out somewhere with my friends. I've actually got some pictures popping up here. The first one is where I'm jumping a two and a half foot wall. And then the second one, that is the last BMX bike I had. The only thing that was original on it was the frame. Because after I got it, I completely stripped it down, put all brand new parts, all everything. There wasn't a single thing left to it that was original except for the frame. Let's continue. Now, it's not like this is the only kind of bicycle you'll see in the Netherlands, of course. There are many others, including e-bikes, cargo bikes, hand cycles, and you'll definitely see road bikes used for sport too, especially on weekends. But for everyday urban transportation, this style of bicycle is by far the most common. So what makes this bicycle so different from what you might be used to? Well, the primary difference is that this is an upright bicycle. It's built to ride in an upright sitting position. This is an inefficient position that will not transmit maximum power into the crank during a pedal stroke, plus it's totally not aero. But who cares? What the upright position does provide is comfort. The handlebars on this bicycle are high up and swept back, making it extremely comfortable to ride. On this kind of bicycle, you almost pull up and back on the handlebars rather than putting any weight on them. This is just a more comfortable way to sit on a bicycle, and the design is very similar to the original safety bicycle developed in the UK in the late 19th century. Sitting upright also makes it easier to see what's going on around you, which can be safer when cycling in busy urban environments with lots of other people around. Over the last handful of years, I've noticed that our stores do sell a handful more of these style bicycles. Not exactly looking that way, but the upright position style of bicycle. I have noticed that we do have those a bit more though they're not near as popular by far. I've only known a couple people to actually purchase one or have seen a couple people riding around the neighborhood. But again, we don't really even have anywhere necessarily that you could ride a bicycle for getting around the city transportation wise at as easy as this. So it's not necessarily something either that is a big commodity other than for pure enjoyment and sport. Riding this way lets you wear any type of clothing you'd like because it's no different than sitting in a chair, which is why you see most people in the Netherlands dressed for the destination and not the ride. This bicycle has a step-through frame, meaning that you can get on and off it very easily without having to swing your leg around like you do on a bike like this with a crossbar. These frames are fine and you'll definitely see them here, but I find them particularly annoying if you have a kid seat because if you swing your leg up to get on, you kick your kid in the head. And I don't understand why we still call these men's bikes when it's the only kind you can hit your nuts on. Because <laughs> step-through frames are more comfortable. I didn't know they were specifically men's bikes. 
actually used, they're increasingly popular for both men and women. This is another thing that contributes to people wearing normal clothes when cycling, and why you'll even see women wearing dresses and skirts. Speaking of skirts, this thing is called a skirt guard or coat guard, and it's quite common on Dutch bicycles. It prevents long articles of clothing from getting stuck in the spokes as you ride. It also helps prevent a child sitting on the back from getting their foot stuck. So whenever I was a child, we used to ride bicycles. My, my parents, we would always go ride bicycles around the neighborhood and get exercise. And we had one just like that where I could sit on the back. Of course, it was the older style, just like we showed a moment ago. And there's been a few times I never got kicked, but definitely trying to, you know, angle it over to arc your leg. You can drop it or fall and get dropped while sitting in that booster seat back there. It has happened, and it does happen. So I can see how that step-through frame would be so much more efficient. Another thing to protect your clothing is the chain guard, a plastic or metal cover over the bicycle chain. It also helps to protect the chain from the elements, making it last longer. This thing here is called a frame lock, and almost every bicycle in the Netherlands has one. These are incredibly convenient for so many reasons, but I've almost never seen them outside of the Netherlands, Denmark, and Japan. They are an easy way to lock the back wheel of your bicycle for quick stops, which makes it really, really easy to pop into a shop when riding somewhere. The frame lock also keeps your key inside as you ride. You can actually buy frame locks that don't do this, but I really like the key retaining feature. This is a small detail, but it ensures that your bike keys are always with you. That being said, I have been known to accidentally hit the key with my leg and bend it like this. Mm. Oops. Also, while there's a lot of space for the locking mechanism in the wheel, I seem to hit the spoke far more often than you'd think. I should have gone into neutrino research. When this lock is engaged, you can't ride the bicycle, but you can, of course, just pick it up and walk away with it. So if you want to ensure that your bike is still there when you return, it's best to bring a chain lock with you as well, and most people do. Right. If you see bikes locked only like this, it's probably because the owner considers their bike too crappy to steal. A slight variation on this is a frame lock with a chain lock integrated, giving you two locks with one key. Interestingly, U-locks, by far the most common locks in North America, are not seen very often in the Netherlands probably because it's difficult to get close enough to something to lock to with so many other bicycles around. When we talk about the bike racks like this, where you can park and go inside and shop and everything else, I would say we have maybe, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a, a maybe 10. I could maybe find and come up with 10 bike parking areas where you could stop and actually lock your bike up within the whole place that I live, the whole city. Maybe fewer. Another feature you'll see on almost every bicycle in the Netherlands is both front and rear fenders. This makes sense in a country where it rains all the time. Fenders are not considered an optional add-on here. What's also included is a kickstand. Almost every bike comes with one. Over the fender, you'll usually find a rear rack, though some bikes have a rack on the front. Ultimately, these bicycles are meant to be useful, so having panniers at the back or a box on the front allows people to carry a surprisingly large amount of stuff, no SUV required. Rear racks in the Netherlands are also built strong enough to carry another person, which you see quite regularly. But then everything on a Dutch bicycle is heavy duty. These aren't aluminium or carbon fiber frames, they're made of solid steel. These bikes are not built for speed, they're built to last. In general, Dutch bicycles are built to be low maintenance. So when a bicycle has gears, they're often internal hub gears like this one. In-hub gearing is great because they almost never need maintenance. This is very different from derailers, which I find are constantly going out of alignment. Yep. Of course, those are the type of gears that I know, and those are well, those are the only gears that I know. Either just your simple, you know, rear and uh, forward, you know, chain cog and gear, or the multi step like that. Many bicycles, including this one of ours, don't have any gears at all. You might also notice that this particular bike doesn't have any handbrakes either. 
A lot of bikes here do have handbrakes, but this one uses coaster brakes that you engage by cycling backwards. This was fascinating to me because in Canada, you will never see brakes like this except on children's bikes. Right. They take some getting used to, but I really prefer cycling like this, as it feels so natural to pedal forward to speed up and pedal backwards to brake. By not having any handbrakes or gears, it keeps the bike simple and maintenance free. I can see getting used to that again. I just, it would be weird a couple times because I'm so used to, of course, with riding BMX my whole life. Hopping on a bicycle like that, I would instantly want to get up to speed and then coast and start just pet. Whoa, start just pedaling backwards, you know. And, and I, at the same time, getting used to the whole backwards push in order for it to, you know, maintain braking pressure. That's not something that would be too awful hard to get used to. It's like riding a bicycle, right? Once you know how to do it, you don't forget. It also avoids any cables that might accidentally get stuck on other bicycles when parking in tight places. That one right there has handbrake. <laughs> Ooh, and it's the old style handbrake too. So if you're not familiar with this, anybody who is watching this in the United States, so right here is the actual brake right there to it. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Let me back up. I am wrong before y'all comment. I am wrong, sorry. That should be for the headlight, because what happens is whenever you engage the headlight, the the little spindle right here rubs against the front tire, and it turns it, and basically it's like an alternator, and it generates enough current for it to power your headlight. That's what that should be right there. All of this is done to keep the bicycle in good working condition, which is important when it's your primary mode of transportation. The only problem we've ever had with this bicycle is the occasional flat tire. And speaking of tires, did you know they use a different tire valve here? In the US and Canada, there are only ever two tire valves, Presta, found on road bikes, and Schrader, found on everything else. Here in the Netherlands, they use a Blitz valve. These valves have a little ball that prevents air from getting out. They're really easy to work with. In case you're curious, you can just use a regular Presta pump to fill these. Just pump it up to a high enough pressure and the valve will open automatically. Another thing you'll sometimes see on bicycles here is a dynamo. These go in the wheel hub or on the wheel and generate enough electricity to power LED lights. Told These you. are pretty nice as you never need to worry about recharging batteries or forgetting your lights. Just another small thing that makes these bicycles simple for everyday use. And lastly, the bell on this... Haha, <laughs> see? I've got some cultural experience. We don't just have that in your side of the world. I've seen that here and I've played with those mechanisms quite a few times in my life. This bike makes a pleasant sound. Ooh. Though you hardly ever need to use your bell here, so it doesn't really matter. When we were still living in Canada, we knew about upright Dutch style bikes and tried for years to buy one, but they were almost impossible to find. This photo sums up the situation in Canada, a selection of bicycles supposedly for commuting with nothing but sporty hybrids and road bikes. They don't even come with a rack, fenders, or kickstand. Maybe there are more bike shops with upright bicycles today, but when we lived in Toronto, there was only one shop that sold them, and the next closest was over 50 kilometers away. Here in Amsterdam, I can't swing a pair of clogs without hitting a dozen bicycle shops that sell functional, practical bicycles. Bicycles that are designed for transportation, not sport. One group in Winnipeg, Canada, got so frustrated trying to find practical urban bicycles that they started importing new and used bicycles from the Netherlands. They call themselves the Plain Bicycle Project, and they're regularly receiving shipping containers full of bicycles from the Netherlands. So to my Dutch viewers, when you're finished with your bike, please consider donating it to needy families in Canada. It's so great to have bicycles that aren't for sport. Bicycles whose primary function is to be there when you need it, to carry your shopping or your friend, and to be used with as little effort as possible. No special gear or costume changes required. This yeah. is a point that's often overlooked because while it's obviously important to have safe streets and cycling infrastructure, it also makes a difference to have easy access to practical low maintenance bicycles like this one. Sure. If I lived in an area where I was able to own a bicycle instead of a vehicle and I could easily, you know, transport back and forth to work using sidewalks or 
any type of actual transportation that was designed here for bicycle travel, it would be so much easier and a lot cheaper. It's a, a whole lot cheaper. And of course, during the times where we have severe weather or just the, the conditions aren't right, of course, you have other methods of transportation, but we just aren't designed like that here. And we don't have that type of road system. We don't have that type of transportation, you know, um, from where I live to where I work is maybe six, maybe, maybe seven miles, if that. And even then, there's only one sidewalk between here and there. And it's maybe, maybe a quarter mile long, if that. And after that, it's just main road that's two lanes on each side with a median and a speed limit above 55 miles per hour. There's no way you could ride a bicycle safely to and from work. Living in Amsterdam, I know that when I need to go somewhere, taking a bicycle will usually be the fastest and most convenient way to get there. But it's also important to know that I won't have any problems either because of our old, clunky, rusty, beat up, comfortable, reliable Oma feeds. Cool. Okay, so that was my first reaction to the channel Not Just Bikes. Again, I've been recommended that channel by many of my viewers. So if you've been one of my recommenders, I appreciate you wanting me to check them out. And I'm glad that I did. Please make sure to give them also the like and the support and feedback because they are the original content creator. And I'm just reacting to it. It's definitely something that I would consider, like I said, if I was capable of using that type of transportation, I would absolutely do it. And especially on the nice mornings, and like the spring, where you get up and it's that cool, crisp air, and you could just ride that bicycle and get the, the air and the, ooh, but you can't. It's a different feeling. Now, many other cities here in the United States, of course, they're set up and designed like that, but not, I don't think, even then, nowhere near to, to that example. I'll have to find out in future videos and watching and learning more about other places, of course, and, and learning about other transportation. So that is why the Dutch bikes are considered better, or why I should want one. It's me, Bryson P., and I hope that you have a great day, great night, whatever time it is that you see this. Goodbye.